A college football Hall of Fame coach once told me his teams never lost a game. They simply ran out of time. Mike Robinson, <laughs> Toledo Rocket silent reporter, joins us now. And Mike Rob, I would say this past Saturday in Ypsilanti is a classic example of a Rocket team that simply ran out of time. And you are 100% right, you know, and, and thanks for having me here today too, by the way. And, and the Rockets, they had an opportunity to really do something special, have the biggest comeback in school history, which was 24 points previously. They had an opportunity to get there, but simply ran out enough time. But some would say the first quarter was the demise of this team this week. Down 28-3 to three in that first half. I guess the first, two que the first question I have, what happened to the defense in the first half? And the second question is, where was the offense in the first half? Well, you know what? It seemed like the Rockets came out flat. It was a tough day for them to get out there and kind of get up. It's a noon game. You're on the road, and it's a team that you're expected to beat, right? And you get out there, and they hit you right in the mouth. And they do exactly what every other team has done to our Rockets defense, is run the ball and pass the ball. And that's the only two things you can really do. <laughs> but they did it so well that our defense looked like – I mean, I didn't look like we weren't even there that day. And then the second half was just a tell of two halves. Like you said, we came out and played great football in the second half. Coach George must have really got into him yeah. and got these guys right because the defense in the second half was what we expect to see every week from the Toledo Rockets. A lot of positive momentum you can build off yes. that second half, particularly defensively, that, that big fourth down stop in the fourth quarter that gave the Rockets the opportunity to tie the game. They got the touchdown, couldn't get the two-point conversion, but the defense in that fourth quarter, there's a lot they can build off of that. I mean, you you got to love Tuzar Skipper stepping up, having two sacks in this game, so that gives them four on the season. So when any time you can get sacks, that's good. The Rockets have not been able to do that since week one. So being able to get out here and get two big sacks sets the tone for the defense. You see Tuzar had a nice little dance, too. They enjoyed it a little bit. The defense was playing well, lights out, and the offense came to life. And this is something that we have to have happen in the first half. They cannot start slow because you see what happens when the Rockets start slow. They get behind and run out of time. Yeah, they, they've outscored opponents this year, and they just ran out of time against Eastern Michigan. Mitchell Guadani, after missing the BG win back, started at quarterback. And just like that entire offense, he just it took him a while to get into his rhythm. But when he did in that second half, we saw what he could do. And he did some great things, and he did some not-so-great things. You know, and the good things we'll start with is – how well he gets back out there with his feet. And that's what we missed last week versus Bowling Green, not having Eli Peters being able to be as elusive as Mitch Guadani is. But sometimes that could be, you know, a double-edged sword, you know, because sometimes he skirted out the pocket too soon where he had an opportunity to throw the ball. Sometimes you can hear screams from the sideline, hey, throw the ball, just let, let it go. The guy is open. And you can see receivers sometimes a little bit frustrated. But, you know, the second half, that changed a lot. And then that last interception was just a tough one. You know, I had an opportunity to kind of keep the ball – to the Rockets, take an extra play, but threw a, threw a deep ball in the middle of the field. That wasn't really uh, any good for the, in, anybody except for Eastern Michigan. They had the chance to come back fourth and goal from the 9-10 yard line. They get the touchdown to make it 28-26, and then the two-point conversion play. You had Bryce Mitchell. Yeah. Give some credit to the Eagle defender for knocking that ball down. Oh, 100%. And, and one would say in the, in the wide receiver room is, hey, we got to go after that ball a little bit better. You know, and Bryce Mitchell, love the kid, coached him at high school at Bowser. This is a kid who has a lot of upside, and he's getting his opportunity in big plays. He had a pass interference call on him that didn't get called where he was pass interference, but this is a play where you got to make it. you got to step up in there, and you got to find a way to make some body-to-body -body contact because it's too big of a play not to come up with it. Before we move on from the Eastern Michigan game, one thing we do need to talk about, Cody Thompson, touchdown catch. Oh, yeah. He becomes the Rockets' all-time leading touchdown receiver. And if you look at his numbers this year, basically every three balls he catches is going for six points. I mean, Cody Thompson, I mean, he's Mr. Big Play last year before the injury. That's all he was known for is Big Play Cody. You see him step on the field. You knew he was averaging at least 15 yards per uh, catch last year, and an unfortunate injury happened. And this year is the same thing. He's getting a lot of balls thrown to him, especially at home. So when he's at home, he's very, very high, and so is Johnson. They both have five touchdowns apiece when they're in the glass bowl. Speaking of home, Rockets back at the glass bowl this Saturday against Buffalo. Six and one, the Buffalo Bulls. We've got to think and say Bulls and not Bills. <laughs> Buffalo Bulls come in six and one. Arguably the best team in the MAC. Certainly on by record, they have the best record of anybody in the MAC right now. I mean, no doubt about it. This is a very good football team. This is going to be the best, you know, second best team that the Rockets may face. 
Uh, this is a team that's going to come in here with a lot of energy, a lot of life. They've beaten some MAC teams. They're three and on the MAC. They're riding a wave. You got Northern and Western. I believe the only two undefeateds mm -hmm. available still. So you got to find a way to get some momentum. And I believe you told me earlier they've never lost at home. So versus the Buffalo. So uh, that is correct. Bulls, not the, the Bills. The Bulls <laughs> are 0 and 3 in the Glass Bowl. The all-time series. Obviously, Buffalo and Toledo have not played that much. Yeah. Buffalo, new team in the MAC, but Toledo does lead that all-time series. 7-3, to three. and I think the visiting team has only won once in that entire series between Toledo and Buffalo. Bulls defense led by Khalil Hodge, your reigning MAC uh, East Defensive Player of the year of the week. He's a guy that flies around, makes a lot of plays on the defensive side of the ball for Buffalo. And we saw a lot of that out of Rockwell last, or Rockwall last week, and he did a great job in Crosby and, and Cosby. Those guys are so good up front, and we're going to see more of that this week. The Rockets had success in the second half running the football. They found ways to get through the gaps, get these guys blocks. They're mixing up the O-line a lot, moving guys around. But when they find that right combination, they got some electrifying guys in the backfield that can do some special things. I mean, Colback, Tompkins, these are guys that are good. I like what Shaquille Seymour did. So they kind of got to find a way to get this groove going. Because if this guy gets started getting sacks early, it's not going to be a good sign. Because once you get the defense hype with interceptions, sacks, big plays, TFLs, that really takes the momentum. And you don't want to suck the land out of the glass bowl because we need all of our fans to really keep us up to get this dub as well. If Toledo's going to build off that defensive momentum from the second half against Eastern, Jason Cannell talked about gap responsibility. They're going to have to be sound in the gap game when you're going up against a Tyree Jackson quarterback. I mean, you got to be sound in the gap game every game. I mean, this is why the Rockets give up a lot of big plays. I mean, usually they get past the first line, beat the defensive line up, find that B or C gap, and be able to skirt right through there. And you're looking like, where's the linebacker at? There's a couple times where you catch the linebackers guessing, jumping in the wrong gap. And at, in the way this 4-2-5 defense is set up, these guys are manned on the outside. you got a safety in the middle. And if he's shading over to the, three, to the trip side or on a tight end locked, it's all types of trouble right there in the middle because if there's no backer there, there's just a gap, and all that running back has to do is just run right through it, and the Rockets really got to focus in on it, and they became gap sound in the second half, so they got to start out good, and usually when Coach George comes down to the sideline, they play even better. So maybe we'll see George on the sideline. You never know. Is this a make-or-break game for Toledo? If, if they beat Buffalo, a lot of things are still out there for the Rockets. A, lo a loss to the Bulls, and all of a sudden you're looking at a season that might not end up in a bowl game. You know what, and this is a, a big game for the Rockets, and they know it. And this is a game that they're not going to take lightly. No one's going to take this team lightly. The Bulls is a very good football team. They're receiving core. They can make some plays on you. So we got to step up. We will be challenged. And it's definitely a make-or-break game in the mind of the coaches. You know, as an average fan and the fans at home watching, they're like, hey, you know, we still got games we can go to and go watch. But no, and, and, and the contention for the MAC title, contention for bowl games, and contention for bragging rights. Mm -hmm. You don't want this team coming in here roughing you up because everyone's going to feel the same way. They're going to think they could come in the glass bowl and play their type of football, and the Rockets have to lay it down and say, this is how we play football here in Toledo, and this is what's going to happen. We're going to dictate the game, dictate the flow. you got to get the ball out the hand of the quarterback, and it's got to be quicker, and you got to be able to get Cody Thompson some touches. When he's touching the football, you know how special he is. So we got to find that to happen, but you cannot lose this football game. There you have it. Thank you very much, Mike Robinson, Rocket Radio Network sideline reporter. Much more from Mike Rob can be found on the BCSN Now app. 